Killer Clowns from Outer Space is the newest asymmetrical horror game on the market. This game is based on a horror film from 1988 that failed at the box office, but has enjoyed decent home video success with a cult following in the three decades since then. This is made by Ilphonic Games, known for a similar title from a few years ago, Friday the 13th. And if you thought that game was silly, you ain't seen anything yet. Hi there, Fox friends! I'm Eriku, your local horror game obsessed Demon Fox. And I'm here today to let you know if this new game, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, um, the game, is worth your time. And spoiler alert, it is. I was actually incredibly surprised by this game. Based on the premise, you really wouldn't expect it to be that great. At least I didn't. While there are some glitches and issues here and there, the overall quality is actually really high. It only took a few games for me to come out really impressed, despite some clear issues that I'll go over. Yep. In Killer Clowns, you take on the role of either a group of survivors trying to escape, or the good old Killer Clowns themselves trying to hunt them down. Pretty standard for this type of game, and I'm sure you're already comparing it to Dead by Daylight in your head. However, out of all the asymmetrical games I've played, I'd say it's less like Dead by Daylight and more akin to Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Friday the 13th. The major difference setting Killer Clowns apart from other asymmetrical horror games is the player count. Instead of the typical 1v4 style of game, each round sees a whopping 7 survivors facing off against a team of 3 alien threats. What I find most interesting about this game are the multiple different objectives for both sides. Obviously, it does boil down to survivors escaping and killers, well, killing. But it's not as straightforward as that. You have options. Firstly, every clown has two types of weapons. A regular damage dealing weapon, such as a mallet or boxing glove, and a secondary cotton candy ray gun. To use your ray gun, you can cocoon survivors, which incapacitates them and requires another survivor to aid them. However, be aware that if a survivor has a bladed weapon, they can use the weapon's entire durability to cut themselves free from a cocoon. Assuming they're unable to escape, clowns can hook cocoon survivors to cotton candy generators. These generators power up the clowns, reduce their skill cooldowns, spawn AI-controlled lackeys that can help find and pin survivors for you, and will end the game one minute after every hook is occupied by a cocoon. This is incredibly hard to achieve in a 15 minute round, so it's definitely earned if the clowns get it to that point. But it spawns a giant explosion that will kill every survivor in the game when it happens. You can also find stray cocoons littered around the map, so you always have something to do as a clown even if there's no survivors around. You can also opt to just use your damage dealing weapon to down or outright kill any survivor you want. This is a lesser risk for lesser reward, and should typically only be done if a survivor is really problematic, if they're the last survivor in the game, or you know they have a sharp object in their inventory where they would break out of the cocoon anyway. It's really interesting, being able to pick the cocoon for more benefit by risking they'll be saved, or just outright killing them for less reward but less risk. On the flip side, you have the survivors in a team of seven. You may think that's a big team, and that's because it is. Survivors are made to search the map and find items that will open one of four means of escape. There's the boat that needs a spark plug and fuel, the bomb shelter that needs fuel and a keycard, a portal machine that, as the name implies, makes a portal for people to escape through, and an exit gate that needs to be broken with a weapon then unlocked with a key. All of these exits can only get three people out at max, so multiple have to be used to save everyone. There's also an exit that only spawns in the last 30 seconds of the match, where the Terenzi brothers from the movie break in and open a path. Very much a last ditch effort if you couldn't find a way into anything else. My favorite of the escape routes is the exit gate, which has a durability meter that drains faster as more people stand on it or if you run or even if a clown stands on it for too long, before it finally breaks and blocks the exit. More often than not, this leads to some very funny moments when someone tries to hang around to tease the killers as if it's dead by daylight, before attempting to leave and being trapped once the path collapses. 
Just leave, folks, or you end up looking like the clown yourself. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Survivors can also fight back with weapons, which is probably the biggest thing to get used to if you're coming from something like Dead by Daylight. Some of the options at their disposal are super strong too, like the fire axe or shotgun. Certain item combos are so powerful you can actually be stronger than the clown for a short time and just win. Everything has durability though, and clowns respawn after about a minute, so this power trip is always short-lived. Despite that, it makes games feel varied with how many different playstyles there can be between fighting and stealth and running away. The biggest positive of the game is just how fun and varied it is. Games feel unique every match, due to so much being dictated by the items you find and how your teammates play on both sides. In one game it'll feel like you're playing hide and seek, then the next the game will feel like an all out battle royale with how much brawling happens. The different game variables and builds and playstyles are really fun, especially if you play with friends and communicate. The game also looks just super nice too. Though graphics are always subjective, it's hard to find much to complain about with this game's aesthetic. It just works and everything is clearly defined and easy to read, and just feels nice to look at. Killer Clowns also solves a dilemma found in many asymmetrical games. Whenever you escape or die in this game, unlike others where you would have to wait around, or just re -queue, you can actually use this system where survivors can play these cute little mini-games. After each one, it lets you give a random item to a survivor who is still alive. Or if you're dead, you can put it in your own inventory in case they're able to use the resurrection machine to revive you. Teamwork is also highly encouraged, because it doesn't count as a win for the humans unless at least four people escape. So these mini-games can really make the difference, especially if you give someone something really powerful. Another positive is the character customization. It's incredibly nice with a lot of options for how you want your character to look and sound on both sides, with nothing being gender locked, which I think is pretty great. It takes a bit to unlock all of the cosmetics, but once you have it you can make a lot of really neat looking characters, and even have a few different weapons to choose from as a clown as well. The cosmetics are all very 80s, which fits the movie, and I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, it's not all positive with Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. There are a few issues currently plaguing it, though it's always possible some of these have been patched by the time you watch this video. So if it's been a few months since uploading, be sure to do some research or check the comments in case someone pointed anything outdated out. Firstly, whether you play as clowns or humans, you can select between different classes to play as. They're decently varied for clowns, Though some are very clearly better than others. I'm looking at you, shorty. But the real problem with this system is that humans seem to lack any noticeable difference in their classes besides stamina. Stamina is so important that, quite simply, playing anything but the athletic class would be hurting yourself and your team. There's also talk from many sources that the strength stat does literally nothing, but I can't entirely confirm this myself. I do know that the HP differences are a lie. You always have three bars. And anecdotally, I also don't notice any real difference in the number of hits it takes to finish a fight no matter which class I play, so take that as you will. A smaller issue is that some weapons and ray guns also don't feel great to use compared to other options. Hopefully this is addressed in a balance patch down the line, but it's worth mentioning. At more high level play, survivors also feel stronger than clowns. The sheer amount of item combos can be deadly, but it's especially apparent with combos such as the air horn item and the fire axe. There are also a couple of annoying bugs and glitches in the game, like items not despawning on pickup, so you'll see a good item and can't pick it up because it's not really there, someone already got it. More annoying are a few unfair exploits, like a few camping spots where clowns can't get to the survivors at all. But I'm not too worried about these, as we've already had one patch within a week of the game's launch. We'll fix them eventually, but it's bothersome as of this recording. The final issue I'd like to talk about briefly is the rage quitting problem. The game is very lenient towards quitters. If someone quits a match, they get no penalty, and a new survivor or clown can even backfill into the middle of the game. Sounds nice, but it's actually really bad for the clown team, depending on the context. 
feel like they should adjust this system somehow. Because at the moment, someone can quit right before they get killed or cocooned, and another survivor will come back in at full health, and it just feels really unfair. Now I know I just spent a lot of time laying out my gripes with the game, but make no mistake, the positives strongly outweigh the negatives for me, despite everything. The game is still incredibly fun, and I do recommend it. To recap our positives and negatives. First for positives. The game is very fun, especially with pre-mates and friends. Varied objectives and maps keep the game fresh. It is very polished and nice looking. It's engaging even as a spectator. And character customization has a lot of options. On the negative side, the strength stat doesn't seem to do anything, along with humans having no noticeable difference. There's questionable clowns and balance, as well as several bugs and glitches, though some have been patched. There's also a very serious rage quitting problem. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. I'll be making more videos soon, much like this one. I also stream on Twitch several times a week, so be sure to check the description for links to that and my other socials if you're interested. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Don't clown around too much now. Bye bye